We've now explored the economic consequences of two types of price regulations. Price ceilings that are set below the equilibrium price and price floors that are set above the equilibrium price. And in each case, we found a way to graph those economic consequences without cluttering the graph with shifts in supply and demand curves, even though we know that there are underlying shifts that give rise to those economic consequences. In the case of price ceilings, we found that once the price ceiling is imposed, firms will want to supply less, but consumers will want to demand more. So that gives rise to a disequilibrium shortage. And now the consumers have to fight to get to those limited numbers of goods. They have to engage in additional effort that's costly. That additional effort causes the demand curve to shift down until it crosses at this new equilibrium. At that new equilibrium, firms get the price ceiling as their price, but consumers end up paying more than the price ceiling once we include that additional effort cost that it took to get to those goods. In the case of price floors, we found that we ultimately end up at an equilibrium up here. When the price floor is imposed, consumers demand less, and firms are willing to supply more at that price. So now we have a disequilibrium surplus, and now it's the firms that have to fight to get to the limited number of consumers. So firms have to engage in additional effort that's costly. Their marginal costs of bringing the goods to consumers increases, that shifts the supply curve until it intersects at this new equilibrium. And there, consumers pay the price floor, but firms actually receive a price that's lower by that equilibrium effort cost they have to engage in to get their goods to consumers. So now that we understand that, and we understand how to graph it, we can ask how are these conclusions affected by different assumptions about underlying price elasticities of demand and supply. So on the quiz, I'm going to ask you some questions about that. I might ask you, how is the size of the disequilibrium shortage affected by a price ceiling depending on price elasticities of demand and supply? Or how is the disequilibrium surplus under a price floor affected by changing assumptions about those elasticities? Or I could ask you, how is the size of the effort cost affected by price elasticities? Or how is the reduction in quantity in these two markets affected with changing assumptions about price elasticities? So in each of those cases, all you have to do is redraw these graphs with different slopes for demand and supply curves, and then read off of those graphs what your conclusions would be. For example, if I asked you, how are things affected when we assume that the consumers are relatively unresponsive and firms are relatively responsive to price changes and a price ceiling is imposed? Well, you would simply impose a price ceiling in this picture and even a modest price ceilings, ceiling would cause the quantity produced in the market to decline by a lot. We would also be able to read in this graph that the equilibrium effort cost for consumers would be very high in this case. So there are a number of variants of these kinds of questions I could ask. And instead of trying to memorize what the answers would be, as you get the questions, simply draw the relevant graphs and see if you can read the answers in those graphs.